What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, here with the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Jesus. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. So I'm going to try and frame this for everyone. And if you're watching this video right now, check the top link. It's his Instagram. You should be following him because to frame this in the historical context, this has never been done before. You smashed the all time record for the highest total in powerlifting tested or untested and you did it in hard mode, okay? You traveled across the country to another country over the sea. You did it with a walked out squat. You did it with the bench commands where you had to have the head on the ground and so on and so forth on the pad. And then the deadlift, you used a stiff bar. So all these conditions and you hit the highest total that's ever been accomplished ever. How do you feel? I mean, I am proud of the work that I put in. My career has been tattered with like wins, then L's, AKA lessons that have just like built up to, to yesterday. Yeah. I remember when I first started, you know, like if there was two principles that I wanted to build my competitive identity in, it was like in doing things the right way. You know, it's like you want to do what you can to the highest standards, so that way it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. I, I just remember like telling my brother and like telling myself like, I want to do things like just the hardest way possible. You know, it might sound a little, a little crazy, but it's like when you can accomplish a certain level of excellence with a certain like standard expectation pressure, it just makes it shine that much brighter, and. For the longest time, like, people would kind of give me some crap for it because it's like, oh, no, like, you're full of baloney, like, you're crazy, like, it's never going to happen. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> like, even before I say this, I just want to, like, say uh, I have a lot of respect for, like, Dennis Cornelius. He's an OG 120. He's a 120 GOAT. Like, I think two, a year and a half ago, he went on a podcast and, like, he pretty much, like, was giving me, like, a cautionary tale like hey Jesus, like you'll never be able to like, to beat the untested side because i want to be the best all time regardless regardless of like tested or untested right because that's just that just sounds freaking badass like yeah. i've always had a vision of the standards that i wanted to hold myself to and i just knew that this was the route to make sure that everything I did was just that much more like cemented. Like n nothing was was cheated, you know, everything, even to the last deadlift, you know, it had to go to the jury table. Yep. They had to, they took a long time looking at it and then, you know, it. they overturned it, you know? So everything has just been like with this, this vision of just having undeniable standards. Um, so I think as you see the standard change, I was around in 2015 with one of the goats, my brother, Andre Milanichev. I saw him uh, break the record then. Then we had Ray Williams. And then down the road, if we're just talking all time, you know, Dan Bell. And I think what's so impressive is regardless of tested or untested, this is the highest total a human has ever achieved. And do you remember, I came up after we're at the banquet and we're just chatting a bit. I said, man, how do you feel all this? And you said, 2600 is next you know what i mean it's almost like like just uh, talk me through your mindset man because for many this not that this would be a feather in the cap you retire but it's a huge moment but it seems as if you're almost focused on the next goal already can you just talk to me a little bit about your mindset i felt really bamboozled after my pa performance 11 10 right like i just was like back at the drawing board and i was just like questioning myself like okay like like how you said, feather in a cap type thing. Like that's kind of what that felt back then. Like, and I remember like having a conversation with Joey and he was like, man, like this peak was the best peak we've ever had. And I was like, no, I don't think so. In terms of like peak and stuff and like coming into this meet, like this one, I'd say felt like the most legitified, especially like the last four weeks. Like I started catching a glimpse, almost like inspiration of something further. Yep than this and that's kind of like 
because like i'm not gonna lie man like after this i was thinking like man like i could i could really go wherever i want after this i just feel like like there's there's more to be done you know like oh we didn't go for the squat record um i think sheffield 2024 is going to be a lot more competitive mm. because i think there might be some people coming over from the usapl who are going to want a piece of the pie mm. you know and even though i made it so much harder for myself next year because like i had this performance like i think i can add another 50 keys by 2024 like i like i, I don't know if you like play football but it's like in football something that our coaches used to say is like you're gonna get hurt if you don't go full speed right and it's kind of true like it's it's weird like you would think it's the opposite like oh like if you walk through it you're gonna be less prone to get injured but in reality it's like if you're not giving it your all then like you're kind of susceptible to something to creep in, right? Whether it's mentally or physical. Like there's even more pressure to like continue to exceed expectations and continue to continue to set the standard. Like that's the weight that you carry when you're the standard, you know? And I feel like a lot of people, when they get to that point, most people crumble, mm -hmm. you know? Like it's almost something that I like, like it's an ideal from Godzilla. Um, I forgot what they call it. There's a specific term, but pretty much it's like there's a natural order of things. Mm -hmm. When somebody or something emerges, there's like this equalizing effect. So that I'm always in my head thinking like, okay, like the better that I continue to get, like that just is going to bring somebody or something out from the woodworks yeah. that's going to like take everything i have to conquer you know whether that be like some unknown person or like myself in the future you know it's like something is like something's in the rise and it's kind of ridiculous like how much you can break something down that's just a three live sport yep. you know but like there's so many aspects of it it's like mentally um spiritually physically um emotionally and like I, that's always one thing that i've been big on it's like to be the best version of you you can be, like those four things have to be in conjunction because let's just say like your physical is good, your mental is good, your spiritual is good, but your emotion, something's wrong emotionally. That's gonna like ruin the cog, so it's not gonna work right. But if you have like those four things, like you're just a smooth operating machine, you know, like you're just gonna keep going. But in terms of like the expectations and the pressure, like just doubling, like that's something that, like I, I knew that was gonna come, and like it's literally just in my head. You know, like that's one of those things where, like you can pay attention to it, you can look at it, or you can ignore it. You know, but I'm a firm believer that pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. Jesus, there's so much about the story that I love. What you said about Godzilla, the primeval force that balances things out. There was Ray, and then Ray from Ray. Now there's Jesus. I want to frame this too. You're only 24, mm -hmm. which means you have a lot of time left to develop. And I think that journey makes it, I don't know, you tell me, more rewarding because of what you described as being the ups and downs where you know, if someone was just to take a look at your Sheffield performance, they'd be like, all right, this guy's Mr. Perfect, right? Yeah. You showed up, you did everything you were supposed to do, and you have no, you know, there's not that there's nothing you had to work on, but you made it look easy, and I think by you making it look easy, people assume that the process was easy, if that makes sense. It takes 100% effort to make something look effortless. Yeah. You know, like, it might have looked easy, and it might have felt easy, but it sure as hell wasn't easy getting there. Well, you know, I was going to say, for yourself as an enthusiast for the sport, what I would want to see, man, I would want to see you set that standard even higher. So I know you said, like we were talking yesterday where you are saying about uh, like strongman or like competing in that, and you could do anything that you want, but man, you're at such a point right now, being 24, I think the sport of powerlifting, which should and needs to continue to grow in order to be viable, you showing up on the biggest stage, improving the total like that, helps bring more attention to the sport. So there's a lot of things going on. The one reason that I, I feel like strongman, like it sounds interesting, but uh, it's like 
You're so injury prone. Um, and I got the opportunity to talk to Jerry Pritchett, you know, mm -hmm, like he's mm -hmm. he's a legend and strongman. But uh, he was like making a joke about how it's almost a rite of passage for strongmen to pop biceps. And I was like, man, like, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> yeah, I think you sticking with powerlifting on a, on a personal Probably standpoint you can, yeah. and just uh, increasing that number, man, and I making mean, it undeniable for you. Because what I'm saying, as you said, that pressure to perform and all those things, I think you've been through so much and I think you've cultivated a certain level of mental discipline that I think you can continue to set the standard. I, I agree with you, man. I feel like it's almost not, I guess we'll call it a mantle of responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, just because I feel like this is where God wants me to be right now. Um, he's literally lined up everything for me to just be where I'm at, you know, even be in this interview, have this conversation. Being the best, it's like when you're at this point, you become more of a symbol than you do a person, you know? So it's like, um, I feel like I can just like fit right into that. And I would love to be the reason that like the next whomever, I'm not gonna say the next A2 because when I was coming up, people were saying I was like the next Ray and I just use that for motivation. I just want to inspire them to not following my footsteps, but take inspiration on how to be like a class act, how to be a good winner, um, how to learn from your L's and like just how to continue improving. I really like what you said, man, that in a sense, responsibility scales as your platform increases. And that's yeah. what I said, you conduct yourself like a champion. A few questions for you. We'll ask an easy one because we're talking yesterday mm -hmm. about just moms, the importance of moms, how we love our moms. Yesterday, what did that feel like, man? Your whole family rolled up. You had the squad. So you had your mom there on the world stage. How did that feel? Man, it was great. It was great. And I don't remember like between what lives, but I just remember like watching my mom's video and like she was just like, had like this big old smile on her face. And uh, she was just talking about like how God's been good to our family and um, how like the doctors pretty much told her to tell her family like, hey, like tell your kids like, your time's coming and then to go from that like almost two years exactly it was two years one day like yesterday and then to just like see my mom smile uh, she was the first person I hugged when I went to the meet and greet you know like obviously had to go on stage it was just like I, I really didn't have any words to say like I just remember like like hugging her and like she was talking, she was saying, she had a lot to say to me, but all I could say was, yes, mom, I love you, mom. Because like, I, I literally couldn't, if I had tried to say anything else, like I would have just like started spewing, you know, I would have started bawling. Yeah. You know, it, it's just not one to have this many ums in my sentences, but it's just, it's very difficult to find the right words to just say, except like, I'm just very blessed. I know you're a stoked guy, so you don't want to get too much into it, but it was a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. And I think you have definitely found your why, and that is clear. And I think when you do it for other people, it almost gives you an increased sense of purpose as opposed to just doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Two final questions, man, for you then. The first one, because you spoke about the ups and downs as you perceive it within the career and how you came back. And what a lot of people aren't aware of, man, that Palatin, when I say Palatin doesn't pay, I mean, you know, we just saw Sheffield, but in general, if one wants to dedicate their life to doing it, it's not like football or baseball where there's avenues and paths of income. You have to make that hard choice. Yeah. One of the hardest times in my life, man, was when I like tried to make that switch to being a full-time powerlifter. I felt like God has just been directing me wherever I've gone in life because I just have always, I always had like this calling to move to San Antonio, right? And I remember when I moved there and the week before I had applied to transfer, cause I used to work at Lowe's. I had applied to transfer to one of those stores in San Antonio. And I just remember like driving home. I had already been on the road, it was like a five hour drive. And I was one hour driving on Sunday, heading back to Odessa and my phone starts ringing. And it's a manager from the Lowe's I had applied to. And they were like, Jesus, like, can you come in on Monday? Like, we're hiring. We saw your transfer application. Like, we'd like to get an interview with you. So, like, I literally busted a U-turn. I called my mom and I was like, uh, mom, um, 
I uh, got a job interview in San Antonio on Monday, so uh, I don't think I'll be coming home. And like, when you make decisions like that, it's very difficult to try to perceive like how the receiving party would feel. One of the things that I kind of had to struggle with was like feeling like I had abandoned my younger, my youngest brother. Something that my family is always really big on is like having deadlines. Yep. So like he was helping me out, but giving me a room to stay in. But at the same time, like he wanted to like put this pressure on me to help me develop. I just remember like trying to find an apartment and then things started kind of going for a turn for bad because like I had been let go from Lowe's. I literally had like maybe three week three weeks left to find an apartment somewhere to live before like my brother kicked me out. And then I even tried to go apply other jobs. I remember going to this orientation and I was just like experiencing like this anxiety that I've never experienced before. Every single cell in my body was telling me to leave that orientation. And um, I left, you know, and I was just like driving and I was crying and I was talking to my girlfriend. We weren't dating yet, but we had like started getting to know each other. So I just remember her telling me like, hey, like, let's meet up at the gym, like, you know, like let's train. It'll help clear your mind and stuff. And um, at the time I was uh, starting to get to know this fellow by the name of uh, Enrique Lugo. And I just remember him mentioning something about TSS having a room in the gym for like students, right? And I called him and I was like, hey, like, you think, uh, do you think that room can get set up or something? Like, do you, like, whatever I have to do, you know, like if I have to clean up for free or whatever, you know, like you think that room's available? Yeah. And he was like, let me make some calls. So then I go to the gym, uh, we're training. And then like Lugo calls me back and he was like, yeah, bro, like we can get you moved in by this weekend. So I was like, ah, you son of a biscuit eater. Um, this was a stressful time. Yeah, man. Super stressful. And I was very reluctant to ask my brothers for help. So like, I think I, I it was like for three months, man, just stressing and stressing. And I almost felt like my hairline started to receive some stress. <laughs> it looks bulletproof, bro. Well, now, now, you know, things are a little better. <laughs> I feel like my hairline is pretty crispy, but it's just, it's been um, a very beautiful journey, you know, and it took a lot of faith. Yeah. It took a lot of faith in that, you know, the Lord was going to provide. And it took a lot of faith in the abilities that he's given me. The whole journey leading up to this. And I think what was so wonderful to see is how you cemented it, where you made it undeniable. And it's as if like you did for yourself, you did it for your family, you did it for legacy and so many different things. And I think just to wrap it up, it really is refreshing to see all those things come together, the perfect meet, the perfect performance, the way, again, that you handle yourself, the way that you conduct yourself. So let me ask you this, Jesus. Is there anything you want to say to the camera? If you can learn from what anything that I just said, it's like, make sure that you have, like, things set up. Like, don't just go dilly-willy into the deep end, you know, because you might not be so fortunate, you know? Like, if I wasn't, like, if I didn't have this potential or this work ethic, you know, or this calling over my life, like there's no guarantee that we'd be here right now. So it's like, you know, like if you're somebody who has that same passion, like just make sure that you're setting yourself up to where you can kind of make tr small transitions towards like that final step where, you know, like you can make this a full time, you know? Hey Zeus. Absolutely fantastic, man. I want to say thank you for the interview. Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to the future. Any final thoughts about anything? Your favorite anime? I want you to drop that. I want you to drop that quick before we wrap it up. Right now. Drop that shit. At this moment, my favorite anime is Blue Lock. It's like super popular. And then my two mangas that I'm reading is Blue Lock and Kaiju Number 8. Hey, hey Zeus. <laughs> awesome stuff, man. Highly appreciate it. Guys, check out all the links down below. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video, and I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace. Oh my God.
Wait, jorts? You can't actually lift in those jeans. Actually, you can, my guy. But are they comfortable? No question. I sleep in mine. Try the all-new Rascal Joints. Perfect for heavy lifting. Perfect for toning. Perfect for if you hate yourself and want to briefly escape the painful existence of reality. Anything. And everything. Wrapped up together? Come on now. Right up. Peace. Five Jakes. We out.